or is it? For the past few years, people have been waiting for it to happen, for the market to crash, for the bubble to burst. But I'm gonna tell you the eight things that you can do to be prepared no matter if it happens and when. Hi, I'm Shayna of The Well Five, and I create videos to help you eliminate debt, grow your income, and build wealth. Most millennials like me experienced the 2008 recession and we saw the devastation that it caused. As a matter of fact, many of us are still impacted because our salaries haven't even recovered once you account for inflation. However, we were also able to see that some people were able to make the best of the situation and change their family's financial future. Since the recession, we've been able to see increased prices in the stock market and in the housing market. But lately, we have seen many indicators that a looming recession is coming. So hit the like button if you think that a recession is headed our way. What is recession? Recession is really an economic cycle that happens and it starts really with unemployment. Once unemployment starts to rise, you'll see fewer job openings. And you'll also see that people who are employed tend to get no bonuses or they get smaller pay increases. And as a result, consumers take notice and they start to save a little bit more and spend less because they start to be a little frightened about what is to come. And then businesses start to pay attention and they realize that they aren't able to make as much money. They aren't getting as many sales and their profits are dwindling. And as a result, they start to pull back and they realize that they can't hire as many people and then they might even decide to lay off people. And so it's this cycle where people start to become afraid of what is to come. They lose confidence in the economy because people are afraid about losing their jobs, having less income. And at the same time, businesses are afraid of the same thing, that they won't have income or profits for their businesses. So people start to get conservative with their approaches. And that is how a recession happens. So is a recession on the way? You may have had conversations with your friend group about the possibility of a recession. And you may have even seen on the news where they're speculating about a recession because of issues like international trade wars, actual wars, and policy issues, and even the stock market being at its all time high. And so the question is, will a recession happen anytime soon? And one of the indicators, one of the best indicators of a recession, people say, is the yield curve. And when it inverts, that means that a recession is likely to come within a year or so. And what actually happened is that last summer, the yield curve actually did invert. And so what happens when the yield curve inverts, that means that short-term rates rise above long-term rates. So the question is still, is a recession coming since all the indicators are pointing towards a recession? Experts are actually reporting that it is unlikely that a recession will happen in 2020. As a matter of fact, they say if a recession is even predicted in the future, it wouldn't happen for at least 18 months from now. So you might be thinking that is great news, but then you also might be thinking that's not so great because 18 months is not that far off. That's only a year and a half away. So what should you be doing to prepare for a recession? And when we do have a recession, what can you do to be able to make the best out of the situation? So I'm going to share my eight tips with you right now so that you can be prepared so you don't have to experience any financial loss if and when a recession were to happen. Eliminating your debt completely or even just paying down your debt will help you in a recession. And the reason why that is helpful is because if you ever were to lose your job in a recession, debtors will be calling no matter what. They will not care <laughs> that we are in a recession. And so they will still want their money to be paid out to them. And if you have large amounts of debts, hundreds of dollars, even thousands of dollars that you have to pay out in debt every single month, this is going to negatively impact you if you lose your job or even if your employer decides to cut your wages. Because that also did happen a lot in the 2008 recession. Employers allow people to keep their jobs, but they cut their, their salaries as a result. So if you aren't making enough money to cover your debt, you are going to be in serious trouble. You might be facing bankruptcy or debt collection and your credit might suffer. 
And these are all things that will have a negative impact on you long after the recession passes. So my advice is to try and pay down your high interest debt first. And then if you can, pay off all your debt if you can within the next 18 months and try your best to pay off as much as possible because it's going to put you in a better situation if and when a recession does happen. Similar to my last point, you want to cut expenses as much as possible. So if you were to have a major loss of income, if you have a lot of expenses that are either subscriptions or debt, or even if you have high rent payments, or a high mortgage that is putting you to a point where you're living paycheck to paycheck already, just imagine what could happen if you were to lose your job. Or if you're a business owner, can you imagine what would happen if people stop shopping at your store, stop buying your services? So you wanna make sure that you are living as lean as possible. So look for ways to cut your expenses consider getting rid of subscriptions, consider getting rid of any of your debt, and also consider cutting back on your expenses when it comes to variable expenses. So thinking about how much you spend on clothing, on food, on shoes, and those types of things every month. And then even consider your major purchases, your or your major expenses every single month related to your four walls, for example. So your four walls or your housing, your transportation, your utilities, and those things. So you wanna look at, am I spending too much? Is my car actually too expensive? Is my rent or mortgage actually a bit too expensive? And think about alternatives to that. So that way when a recession does come, you're able to weather the storm if your income were to lessen, if your business were able, were somehow taking in less profit. Another way to weather a recession is to get another stream of income. So there are so many ways to make money outside of your regular source of income, whether that be a nine to five, or even if you have a business, there are ways to generate multiple streams of income. And if you're able to generate multiple streams of income, if your business were to lose profits, or if your job was to cut you or release you, or even cut your, your pay, you would have another source of income that you could rely on. And that will allow you to then build up your ability to pay off debt and increase your savings. So having another source of income really insulates you from a lot of problems because the probability of you losing two jobs is a lot lower than you losing one job. So find more than one source of income and it doesn't have to be a job. I said job just now, but it can be anything that brings in money and be creative because there are so many ways to bring in multiple streams of income. An emergency fund is typically used when there's an emergency such as a job loss. And during a recession, that is highly likely that you will experience a job loss. And so it is time to build up your emergency fund. If you wanna learn more about emergency funds, check out this video right here. But you definitely wanna build up your emergency fund. That way, if you were to lose your job, you'll be able to sustain yourself for several months until you're able to find another job or after the recession passes. So you'll want to make sure that you are paying off your debt and you do have multiple streams of income and you are eliminating your expenses. So that way you have more money to contribute towards your emergency fund. So when the recession does happen, whenever that is, you'll have a pot of money that can sustain you for months and maybe even years. Okay, so I've talked a lot about losing your job and that might seem like a lot of doom and gloom, but I mean, re in reality, it's likely. It's really likely. But what can you do to avoid a job loss in a recession? The best thing that you can do is to maximize your professional value for your employer. And the same thing goes if you own a business. Maximize the value that you provide for people. So if you are an employee, you want to think about getting an advanced degree, getting certificates, or even taking on additional responsibilities at work and doing things that will get you noticed. That way, when people are analyzing their workforce, they're like, you know what, Shana's a really good employee. We cannot 
sustain past this recession without her. So if you are able to figure out ways to maximize how people perceive your value within their organization, there is a lower likelihood that you will get laid off during a recession. And then the same thing goes for businesses. You want to think about how you can position yourself as being something that's needed for people during recessions. Because a lot of times people start to cut expenses that are frivolous or nice to have. So if you have a business that's a nice to have, you might want to rethink how you can position your, busi your business as something that is a necessity for people. So even in a recession, people will be coming to patronize your business because you have something that is of necessity, of value to them, no matter what their income is or whatever is going on in the world at that time. So think about how you can professionally and business-wise increase your value. You've probably seen on social media because I have seen these posts where people are talking about, I can't wait for the recession to come so I can become a real estate millionaire or so that I can make lots of money in the stock market by buying up all the stocks when they're at a low price. And a lot of people are actually looking forward to a recession, but they are waiting for a recession to happen. And my big point here is do not wait for a recession to invest because you are missing out on lots of opportunities now. There are still deals now in real estate. There are still deals now in the stock market. There are still ways to be able to profit now and you don't have to wait for a recession to happen. And the reason why you don't wanna wait for a recession to happen is one, we don't know when it's gonna happen. And then two, you also don't know what's going to happen to you because you might be in the unfortunate situation where you actually don't have that extra money to be able to buy a property when housing prices drop. You also may not be able to buy more stocks when stock prices drop. So you want to capitalize on the situation now because if you are making wise investments, they're wise whether they're in the recession or out of a recession. One key point that I want to make about recessions and housing market crashes is that they are not one and the same. A lot of news articles are pointing out that a recession may happen, but a housing market crash may not actually follow. And this actually is true to history. When most recessions happen, the housing market does not actually take a dive. It actually continues to get stronger. So the likelihood that we'll see another housing market crash with the next recession is unlikely. So you don't want to miss out on the low prices that are available now. You might think they're high now, but they actually might just be the lowest that they could be. And you don't want to miss the boat by waiting for a recession and also waiting for a housing market crash that might never ever come. So take advantage of opportunities that you see now. Related to my last point about investing, you want to keep investing when a recession does happen. A lot of people tend to freak out when a recession happens. One, because they're losing money, right? The stock market prices are lowering, so they're losing money, they're losing their net worth. And so they start to get a little worried and they wanna sell off their stocks. That's the worst thing you can do. You actually should keep your stocks in place and then start to buy more stocks because think about it, the stocks are on sale. And the other things that you should do when it comes to investing is making sure that your portfolio is diversified. If you have a diversified portfolio where you have things in international stocks or you have things in different asset classes, that will allow you to weather a recession a bit more because all asset classes don't always get impacted dur during a recession, especially when you think about the international markets. Some of the international markets might go stronger during our recessions. So you might still be able to profit if you are well diversified. Another thing that you wanna do is to make sure that you take advantage of tax loss harvesting. That way you are making sure that you're not losing additional money. And then you also wanna make sure that your portfolios are balanced. So you wanna make sure that they are balanced towards the goals that you have actually set. So for most millennials, we aren't planning to retire probably for another you know, 30 years on average. So 
we need to make sure that our portfolios actually reflect that and that we're not being too aggressive but we're being aggressive enough because after the recession there will be life after the recession and we'll be able to recover whatever losses we do have but you want to make sure that you're not being too aggressive because if you're too aggressive what you'll actually see is that you'll have a lot of stocks in your portfolio and those will tend to have a larger impact on your net worth and those will end up you know dwindling in prices and reducing your the value of your stock portfolio but if you are balanced and you have a good you know target projection that will help you meet your financial goals then you won't be as impacted and so that's something that you should be paying attention to balancing your portfolio and doing that actually regularly every single year even in and outside of a recession if you implemented the tips that i shared earlier in this video such as paying off your debt reducing your expenses and increasing your emergency fund then you will be primed and ready to take advantage of the opportunity that presents when a recession does happen so when a recession happens several things may occur such as the stock market prices lowering housing part prices lowering and also you might end up losing your job which might actually be an opportunity and a blessing in disguise so what you want to do is you want to jump on those opportunities you don't want to stay on the sidelines at all because it is time to move and act especially if you've been prepared if you have the money if you are secure financially this is the time to take advantage so that you can change your financial future in a second so what you want to do is you want to start buying those stocks at lower prices you want to start investing in real estate because the prices will be lower on homes and you'll get really great deals and then you also want to if you lose your job or if you're on the brink of losing your job you want to start thinking about other opportunities beyond your career field this is the chance when you have time and opportunity this is the chance to make something great so you want to start thinking about business opportunities where you can generate ideas fumble on your ideas and even once the recession passed be able to profit and have a huge business that brings in tons of revenue for you and other people so this is the opportunity to take advantage and you don't want to sit on the sidelines be ready be prepared to make a difference in your life when the recession happens because this is a unique opportunity that doesn't really happen and you have to view it as an opportunity to be able to get things at a discount and also to leverage an opportunity such as a job loss and think of it in a positive light that may change the financial future for yourself and your family as I mentioned, the key to being prepared for a recession is making sure that you get your finances in order. And one of the biggest keys to getting your finances in order is making sure that you are on a budget and you have that emergency fund in place. So check out this video right here because I want you to be prepared to take the advantage of the opportunities that present themselves in recession because one will come. We just don't know when. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you're subscribed and I'll see you in the next one.